Msivu Yesu Kristo mpendo wa mtazamaji wa Kapuchin TV na karibu kwenye makala hii ya juu ya mwamba huu ambapo tunakutana na baadhi ya viongozi, baadhi ya mashahidi na mashujaa wa imani ya kanisa Katoliki. Leo tumebahatika kumpata mhashamu askofu mteule mwandamizi katika jimbo Katoliki la Isiolo ambaye atajitambulisha na atuelezee zaidi kuhusu yeye mwenyewe na huduma wito ambao ameitiwa na Mungu kupitia kwa kanisa kwenye jimbo Katoliki la Isiolo. Karibu mashamu askofu asante kwa kupata muda kuongea nasi. Asante. Wengi wamejua Jimbo la Isiolo, wengi wanajua Consolata na pengine wangependa kujua zaidi kuhusu wewe ni nani, majina yako na maisha yako. My name is Father Monsignor Peter Munguti Makau. I am I'm from uh, Machakos Diocese uh, in a parish called Masi Parish and I was born here in Nairobi in Pumwani Maternity because my parents were staying here in Nairobi and I began also my schooling here in Nairobi in uh, Madaraka, uh, Madaraka Road Primary School and then later when I was at standard 6-7 we relocated back to, to Machakos and so where I finished my, my primary school mm -hmm. and then I continued with my, my formation. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Secondary school, where did you attend? Yeah, in the secondary school I attended in uh, Machakos in a minor seminary called Popol the sixth junior seminary mm -hmm. that was back in 19 from 1991 to 1994 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and then later is when now i entered consolata missionaries mm -hmm. that is from 1995 yeah 1995 we began with the orientation course and then began philosophy mm -hmm. uh, here in consolata seminary in langata okay yeah, yeah. let's back let's okay. go back to the family mm -hmm. uh, how many were you in the family your mom okay. your dad and your siblings mm -hmm. and how was uh, the formation at the home there the upbringing mm -hmm. and how did they react to your choice of becoming a missionary well uh, first of all in my family we are we are seven you can say that we have five siblings and uh, our two parents uh, uh, unfortunately, my, my dad passed on uh, some years back, mm -hmm. and now also my one of my sisters also passed on. So I'm the third born in this in this family, and of course we can say this family or my family is a very very Christian family, especially my mom and my dad were very 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 Christian cath Catholic devoted, mm -hmm. and I can even say that even my vocation began from my family the family background because we are used always to pray. My dad was very, very fond of that. Praying, morning prayers, evening prayers, way of the cross, rosary, going for mass daily. I mean, and then of course my dad and my mom were very active in the church. And of course this one helped us a lot. Also, we as the siblings to enter into, into the different groups you know, that were there in the church. For example, myself, I belong to the choir and also the altar service. Mm -hmm. And it's from there that I can say the vocation began a, growing slowly by slowly. Mm -hmm. Even in morning masses, of course, we were a bit far from the parish, but uh, uh, I could sometimes take milk to the cooperative which was mm -hmm. nearby. And of course, I could attend daily mass. And mm -hmm. of course, that one helped a lot to nature my vocation as such. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. How did this uh, uh, vocation come to you? Were you influenced by someone who was that? And uh, like someone, you know, uh, when you approach your parents to tell them, I would wish to join the seminary. What was their reaction? Well, the first thing is, you see, after I mean, the family life and then the Christian life in the parish and in our station, I went to the minor seminary. And I say the minor seminary also influenced a lot. Mm -hmm. This minor seminary by then was being run by the Holy Ghost Fathers and later the, the, uh, the, 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 the diocese of, of Machakos. And the same, same priests were there were also in, in my parish, mm -hmm. Holy Ghost Fathers of which I normally thank them for the formation that they gave me. You know? So it is in the minor seminary and also in the family that uh, this uh, love to serve the people of God really uh, uh, began to, to grow, mm -hmm. I can say, in one, in one way or, on a, or on another. So 
in the minor seminary of course we had moments of prayer moments of coming together different group YCS and the rest and also pray uh, masses daily masses and this one of course began like creating that awareness that we can serve the people of God of course by that particular time we had of course the diocesan life but also the religious life and we can say what really inspired me to join the religious life it was these holy ghost fathers because first of all they were in the, the in my parish mm -hmm. but also in in this minor seminary and what i really loved of them is two things one they were people who are really devoted to the mission in the sense that they could give their very their whole self mm -hmm. i mean to animate people to do the different constructions and especially their community life because mm -hmm. they were living three three of them so when i was coming most of the cases for the for the for the morning masses i could find them praying the the breviary mm -hmm. and i found it very very interesting no how can people coming from another culture three of them praying together no then secondly it is a fact that they knew our culture and our language in a very very in a very uh, excellent way mm -hmm. that they could even correct us really? when we were reading in Kikamba and, wow. and wow. also in Kiswahili wow. so I was saying but if these people left their country that is I Ireland and they came to Kenya they learned the language they learned the culture they even helped us in in education mm -hmm. why can't I also do the same thing wow do the same thing so that is i can say that mm -hmm. which really played a lot in the in my vocation mm -hmm. uh, the holy ghost fathers and then of course in the minor seminary and also the family mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. whom did you tell about this information first did you go to your father or your mother that now i'm going i'm now joining officially as a, i'm going to apply uh, now uh, before uh, before we of course in the minor seminary i need maybe also to to do this in the Mena Seminary, of course, we could get a lot of information from different congregations. And, of course, we had the Holy Ghost Fathers. Mm -hmm. Also, the consulars could send some pamphlets, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like the seed and also the call. So we began now like having a variety of congregations and institutions that really were, were really applying. My first idea was even to join the Holy Ghost Fathers. But, I mean, because of the Fathers and also the Mena Seminary. But now by the fact that uh, the vocations director was in Tanzania, because it was one region, mm -hmm. so the letter really took a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, I also applied to, to the consulator. And the vocations director of consulator, may rest in peace, Father, uh, uh, Father, uh, Father Tilio Lerda, he was very insistent in giving information about consulator. And of course, this one also triggered in me, because when, when, when we were... Uh, staying in Nairobi, we were going to the Flora uh, hostels mm -hmm. in the regional house of the consular sisters. So I, I connected between the consulator that I was singing in the choir, mm -hmm. and now the you can say the the consulator where the, you know, the vocation director was uh, was writing to us. Mm -hmm. So this one, I first of all I communicated uh, to my parents, that is my dad and my mom. My dad, of course, being very religious, was saying, oh, just go and serve mm -hmm. the people of God. Mm -hmm. But my mom was a bit uh, reserved, saying, oh, you know, priests, uh, I mean, to become a priest, you need serious people, but mm -hmm. you, you are always joking up and down. Mm -hmm. I doubt if at all you are going to, <laughs> to make it, you know. But mm -hmm. thanks be to God, really, mm -hmm. they really nurtured mm -hmm. and uh, accompanied me, especially with, with prayers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The journey to, se to the seminary, you mm -hmm. have applied, you have been... Uh, 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 record or mm -hmm. called mm -hmm. now how was the formation where were you to go and uh, with whom are you to go now uh, in, f in the formation of course uh, uh, after we were in the minor seminary we were invited for a come and see mm -hmm. with the consulate missionaries where we met uh, so many of us in the in sagana in sagana technical school where mm -hmm. they had orga organized the come and see and even it was the first moment of meeting also the vocations directors and also briefing us about the charism of consolators, where they are working, uh, their spirituality, the founder, I mean, so many things. Mm -hmm. So it is where that now that we began now developing, beginning now the formation, come and see, which I uh, participated in two of them. Uh, and then after now this come and see, 
we were uh, after the exams were, were out we were selected i mean or chosen to begin the formation in the orientation course by then it was called orientation course now it is called proper duty here mm -hmm. there is now where atilo invited us to come and begin this orientation course and we did it also in consolata in consolata seminary where we did almost like uh, was, uh, three months and then later we began philosophy in 1990, 1995. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. In a summary, take us through the formation years, mm -hmm. the academic formation years, mm -hmm. uh, philosophy where in particular, mm -hmm. and the theology where in particular, okay. and among, mm -hmm. among your, your classmates or schoolmates. Exactly. Now, in uh, philosophy, uh, we began a consultant, a consultant seminary here in Nairobi, where we did it uh, for three years. And uh, we were a group, we were around 20, uh, 28 when we began. And we co proceeded with the, the formation of uh, philosophy for these uh, three years. And then towards the end, we, we applied. I mean, we began the aspirancy and then the postulancy. Now the postulancy is uh, a semester before mm -hmm. the novitiate, where now we, I mean, the formators uh, helped us. And my formator was Father Anthony. Anthony Kazibwe, that he helped us really to come into, to understand, especially the spirituality of consolata missionaries. Then afterwards, we went for the novitiate. Novitiate, we did it in, um, in Sagana, uh, where we have our novitiate. And then, on, uh, apart from the charism, apart from the spirituality, apart, apart from the religious life constitution, we had also opportunity to go and do pastoral work on the weekends, that is Saturday and Sunday in one of the stations i mean and uh, the novitiate we were we were 15 uh, the ones who, who who applied and were accepted 15 and then we made our first profession in the year 1999 yeah 1999 6th of august mm -hmm. 1999 and even this year we are celebrating the jubilee wow. of 25 years mm -hmm. of religious of religious life then later uh, we were given the first obedience and the first obedience, uh, given we are an international congregation, we have different theological seminaries in, in the whole the world. Here in Africa, for example, in Africa we have two. In Italy we, we have one. In Latin America we have two. And also in, uh, in, 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 in Europe. No? So myself, I was, I was given the first destination, uh, first obedience to go to Congo. That was in 1999, mm -hmm. and at that, at that particular time, it was when Congo was in war, and even Congo was divided into two. No? So I was asked by, by the congregation if I'm willing to go to Congo, because normally we usually write three, three, three options, mm -hmm. and then the, 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 the congregation chooses. So I was taken to Congo. Of course, in Congo, we stayed there for five years, one year for language, learning French, and four years in theology. And I can see even Congo is part and parcel of my life because mm -hmm. really it's where I came really to love the Catholic faith, the liturgy and so many things, you know, because it really helped us a lot, you know, mm -hmm. and also the culture of the people and, and, and so many things. Then later, after that, I was taken to, I was given now the second obedience, you can say, uh, now to be ordained the deacon, first of all, uh, I mean, after the, the other ministries of elect electorate, acolyte, and then deacon. I was ordained deacon in one of a parish called Saint Cyprien in in Congo, where I was doing also my pastoral work. Mm -hmm. And of course, for me, it was really something very, very touching. You no, know? the people that you saw, they are the ones who organized the ordination, the diaconate ordination. And then later, I I, I came back here to Kenya mm -hmm. for the priestly ordination. That was in the year 2000, uh, November 2004, on the feast of Christ the King. Wow. And thanks be to God, uh, it was done also during the feast day of the parish, par uh, the family day of the parish, the feast of the Christ the King. That is yeah. at home? At home in Machakos, mm -hmm. in Machakos Diocese, in Masi Parish. So it was also another good celebration where mm -hmm. it was the first ordination that uh, it was to be done, that was done in the parish. Oh, really? So it really created a lot of, you can call it missionary animation, mm -hmm. and even uh, one of our consolator missionaries, he got his vocation. He, he always tells me that he got his vocation when he saw this, Amen. this, uh, this, this celebration of the ordination. Amen. Yeah. So we thank the Lord. And then after that mm -hmm. is now when I was ordained by Bishop Lele 
uh, he was the by then was the bishop of Kitui, mm -hmm. and then I was ready now to go for mission. Wow. Yeah. We are talking to uh, uh, Monsignor Peter Mungoti Makau, uh, Bishop Elect Coadjutor in the Catholic Diocese of Isiolo. Take us back to Congo, Kidogo. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about the liturgy, Congolese liturgy, the one that uh, uh, they are used to there, mm -hmm. and the Roman liturgy that mm -hmm. we use here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. How similar and dissimilar they are? One, uh, you know, even the, the Congolese liturgy, I mean, which is, I, I love it, and especially when we talk about the litany and even the mass itself, mm -hmm. they even called it Zairean Rite. Yeah. Yeah, Zairean Rite. It is very unique in itself when you compare it with the, the, with the, the Roman Rite as such. Mm -hmm. Because, first of all, they in, in culturate the traditional values into the liturgy. Mm -hmm. For example, when we invoke the saints in the church, sometimes when we have celebration, mm -hmm. they, they invoke the saints each and every day, but not the saints as such, our ancestors, when we begin the, the, the Eucharistic celebration. Mm -hmm. That it is really, it, it takes also quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we invoke the, the, our ancestors so that they can really accompany us in this liturgy. Then secondly, it is the celebration of dancing. Mm -hmm. That is part and parcel of it, wow. especially, for example, now during the um, glory, I mean, the, the main celebrant, that is the priest, you know, the altar is the center. So the main celebrant with the altar servers, they usually dance ar around, the, around the altar. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. In sensing, really, it is, it is too, too solemn. Thirdly, the music. Mm -hmm. The music, it is really wonderful, and also the voices, because Congolese really, they are blessed mm -hmm. with really with the with the with the voice you know mm -hmm. so they sing very very well so we find that at least um uh, what we shall say is that the congolese right i mean in the congolese right they have integrated the cultural values in the liturgy itself mm -hmm. in comparison with the roman right okay because the roman right of course we follow what exactly uh romas mm -hmm. uh, romas really mm -hmm. stipulated yeah mm -hmm. and they are really the t african traditions they are really integrated in it. Mm -hmm. And of course, even the language itself, they use the, of course, where I was in Kinshasa, it was the Lingala itself. Okay. And even speaking Lingala, it becomes like part and parcel of, mm -hmm. of it, you know. And also the, the Christians, they are very dedicated. I can, I can put it like that. Because they are the ones who take care of, of the church itself. Mm -hmm. The organizers, you, you, I mean, you, the leaders, even the youth, I mean, from we begin from the the young, no? We call them like here they're now the PMC. Yeah, they call Kizit Kizito and Warite, group car, group uh, group car, we have the youth, we have the young adults mm -hmm. until until the uh, old people, no? Mm -hmm. So the structure is well 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 defined wow. in the church of mm -hmm. in the church of Congo. Thanks to Cardinal Malula. Because okay. he's the one who really mm -hmm. made this mm -hmm. to be possible. You, you 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 can talk in Lingala? Of course, yes. How do they greet? Mbote. Mbote. Eh, mbote, mbote. And uh, how do you say? Oh, eh? Christ. Eh? How do they say? Eh? Praise be Jesus Christ, to Jesus Christ. Or eh? how do they greet normal, like uh, liturgical? Liturgical, okay. Liturgical. The, liturg and that is also something very interesting. They usually say, Bandeko Boboto. And then you, repon, you respond, Boboto. Bondeko, Bondeko. Mm -hmm. Esengo, Esengo. Lisanga, Lisanga. And wow. It's really, it's really, uh, I mean, it's melodic in itself. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even wow. the preface, the, I mean, the prayers, they are all sung mm -hmm. in a very, very solemn, solemn way. Mm -hmm. I invite you also to just to look for the, the litany, mm -hmm. how they sing it. Wow. Ah, it is wow. sacred in itself. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, when you were ordained, who was your superior here in the Consolata Missionaries here in Kenya? Mm -hmm. And where were you sent the first appointment? Now, when I was ordained, uh, my superior by then was, uh, was, was Father Viotto. Now he's late. Father uh, uh, Viotto was the superior. And he's the one who really um, came with the news and also presented me with the ministerial letters to the bishop for me to be, to be ordained. Mm -hmm. And then later is now when he told me, look, the general government, because uh, ge the general government in Rome had given me an obedience to go and work in Venezuela, that is in Latin America. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they are the ones, is the one who really communicated me this information mm -hmm. and also the decree that came with it. And then I was sent to Venezuela 
where as when I reached Venezuela, the first thing was to learn the language. Again. In Congo, I had learned French, mm -hmm. now and French and Lingala, mm -hmm. uh, and then now going to to Venezuela, I had to learn Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, but given that there are Latin languages, it mm -hmm. was a bit easier to to do it. So within five months already, I knew I had already known wow. uh, Spanish, and I I was sent after the language I was sent to work in one of our parishes wow. there in. Venezuela. How many languages now? English. Mm -hmm. Kiswahili, mm -hmm. Kikamba, yeah. French, French yes. Lingala, Kilingala, Lingala, Spanish, Spanish, yes, six, yes. And you had to learn from Isiolo. I don't know which language they use. Yeah. <laughs> Even Italian, a bit Italian, yeah, you are right. <laughs> wow, how was life in Venezuela? What kind of people are you serving, and where were you exactly? Uh, in Venezuela, I mean, uh, first of all, Venezuela is a, is a big country, but we as uh, consulate missionaries, we have a delegation. Mm -hmm. It's a small a small group of missionaries by then we are around 15 to 20 to 20 missionaries and there the the good thing is that um, in even latin america it's they speak one language mm -hmm. majority of countries in latin america they speak either spanish and portuguese in okay. in brazil mm -hmm. so it was easy to communicate mm -hmm. so i was first sent to one of our parish uh, one of the parish called uh, saint joachim and saint anne it was in the outskirts of the the, the, the city of Caracas, mm -hmm. that is the capital city, in one of the slums. Yeah, you know, it, is, it, it reminded me because when I was in philosophy, I was also working in, in Kibera, in mm -hmm. Kibera mm -hmm. slum in Katwikera. Mm -hmm. So it was like going back again to the, okay. the, to the reality that I, I was used to, especially when I was in philosophy. So there are slums in South America yeah, also? Of course, of course. Okay. There are so many, so many, mm -hmm. so many, and big ones, yeah, mm -hmm. big ones, yeah. Yeah, so uh, slum, but of course, you know, the slums in comparison with Kibera and uh, mm -hmm. they are totally different, no? Because they at least you have water, electricity, okay. power, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, drainage system is also okay. good in comparison to maybe the slums of here in, uh, and, uh, in, uh, in, 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 Af in Africa, in, in particular in Kenya, no? Mm -hmm. So I was there uh, for a period of, uh, as an assistant parish priest for four years, and then I became also the parish, the parish priest of the same parish for another period of six years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you are in uh, Venezuela for 10 years? Uh, no, no? That in that parish. In that parish? I mean, four years as, four as years an assistant, assistant six, six years as a parish priest, mm -hmm. and then now is when I was elected to become the delegate superior. Still there? In, in Venezuela. Okay. Yeah, for two terms. That is from 20, uh, 2014 mm -hmm. till 2019. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I was there for two terms. And then later is when now the general superior requested me that uh, to come over with also my colleague, that is Father Zachary Kariuki, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that uh, they needed us here in, in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And we came. Wow. After finishing, uh, finishing my mandate there, mm -hmm. we came. And we were here in Kenya s since uh, August 2019. Wow. So you have spent most of your personal life in Venezuela? Yeah, 15 years. 15 years in, in Venezuela. 15 years, 15 years in Venezuela, yes. Wow. Wow, that's a huge experience. <laughs> if there's something, one or two things you could take from Venezuela to bring to Kenya, mm. as an uh, ordinary Kenyan or mm. as a priest mm. or now in your ministry, what would you bring? Uh, in Venezuela, I really learned a lot. Because, as you mentioned before, Venezuela at that particular time, that is from 20, when we went there, that is 20, um, 20, um, 2005 uh, till 2019, it is, Venezuela was undergoing a very, a transitional moment from a capitalist mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. to a socialist government, communist. So there was a lot of transformation. And a lot of people, I mean the poor, I mean they began really suffering a lot. Yeah. So one element that really I loved of Venezuela is the aspect of welcoming, the wel welcoming spirit. Mm -hmm. And Latin American, even without knowing you, can just come and hug you without any, even without asking. First of all, you, you continue sharing, and then it's later that he's going to ask you, what is your name? Oh, really? Where do you come from? I mean, wow. Yeah, without even, I mean, they, I mean let me put it this, they don't care. <laughs> you just, first of all, you share, mm. open, 
And then the church is very, very dynamic, especially with the youth. Mm -hmm. I mean, people really feel they belong to, of course, uh, Latin American, ma many of the Latin American countries and also Venezuela inclusive. It is countries that we can say they are 80% Catholics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because majority of them have been baptized. Yes. But now the issue of uh, participating in the church activities, that's something else because it is like the culture and the, 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 the church, the culture and the social activity, they come, they mm -hmm. come, mm -hmm. it is one and, one and the same thing. So that openness of the people of Venezuela and their simplicity is something that really touched my life. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, especially now with this difficult moment that Venezuela was, was undergoing, it is the spirit of resilience. Yeah, a spirit of resilience that despite difficult situation that they could undergo, you could ask somebody, how are you? Hey, I'm, 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 I'm fine. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. Somebody qualifies. He might wow. be undergoing a very difficult situation, but okay, I'm fine. Thanks be to God. Wow. Yeah, and also the fact of blessing. Any time, even when a young person meets you, an old person, the first thing he's going to ask you is, Father, uh, Padre Bendicion, Father, that meaning that, please, uh, uh, Father, bless me. Wow. Even if he's a, <laughs> a crook, is a <laughs> is a thief is whatever mm -hmm. i mean the issue of blessing and that spirit of resilience is something that wow. really I admired wow. for the wow. people of wow. Venezuela. Wow. Thank you. leo tumebahatika kumpata mhashamu askofu mteule mwandamizi katika jimbo katoliki la isiolo